can't seem to talk today. Like, I, this is like the third recording I've done of this, so bear with me if I'm getting tongue tied. This is a call where a um, witness phones in a distressed female who I believe has been raped. Now, I don't go into any detail about that because I don't know that side of it, but if this is going to trigger anyone, then I just advise not to watch it. So, just skip this one if that's a sensitive subject for anyone. So, Basically what happens um, on this one is I get a call, I think it's like a Thursday, early morning Thursday or Wednesday. Um, I'm doing a night shift so it's pretty quiet. I'm not allowed to say quiet or you weren't allowed to say quiet. You had to say Q because apparently if you said quiet then the whole fucking room would go mental and it'd get busy and you'd be the one to blame. So um, it was really dead in the room and I get a 999 call and a lady has been woken up to screaming. So she's in a flat um, on like the second or third floor and she can hear this woman like wailing and screaming. So she looks out of her window and I think from what she described, it was like quite a long road that led to where her flat was. Um, and there was like a park right at the end. So I don't know, probably 500 yards or something like that. Although I'm pretty crap with like distance and stuff. So somebody might be like, that's fucking miles. And I don't know. I mean, I, no, it wasn't that far away. So, um, she sees this woman running naked down the road. Um, she's covered in some cuts and she's bleeding a little bit, but nothing horrific. And she is, she is running, she's pelting it down. Um, so my caller can see her, because she heard the screaming phoned up, saw her running, thinking, fuck now. So she's describing like what her hair and her build's like, and um, and then she disappears. So we're getting officers there straight away. I'm thinking, fuck now, like, okay, bang, 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 location. Luckily, this lady was on the board, she gave me a postcode. Um, I just said outside that property, we got it over in like seconds and officers were like dispatched straight away. Um, so when you get somebody who knows, like, you know, really good with giving information, it's, it's fucking great. Like it really does help. So we got um, officers out area searching straight away and I kept the lady on the phone in case she saw this woman running around again. And she could see officers and she was trying to direct them as to where this woman had gone. Um, and I think... Um, I managed to, I, I let her go um, after a while because officers were in the scene and I said we're going to come and see you and take a statement. So she was pretty shaken up and I was like making sure she's okay. I said, you know, it's quite horrific what you've seen. Are you going to be all right? You know, see if I can point her in any direction of help and get the officers to speak to her about it when they come to see her. Um, I think she said she was a bit distressed, but she thinks it was all just adrenaline, but well, hopefully we went and supported her. And then... Um, I believe later on there was another call um, that got matched into that job where somebody had seen a man staggering out of the park. Um, so they were like searching for his description too. Quite a big lad, I think. Anyway, so that was the end of my you know involvement with that call. And it's funny how it works sometimes. So I got a job or a phone call like later on in the week. Like I think I had like rest days and I came back and I was like on a day shift or something. And I had a call from like, a man and he was um, just like a neighbour in the street and he said oh I'm pretty sure there was a call uh, sorry a job um, in this area we had like um, notes for our house um, basically saying if you've seen or heard anything call up and quote a reference so he had done that and I was like oh no I know, I know the reference like, sometimes those things just stick with you so I just um, pulled it up straight away we haven't had any update on the suspect at that point but he was basically telling me um, that he heard an argument between a male and a female that night at around that sort of time in that area. There wasn't much to it other than that, but it's just funny the way sometimes you can you get like a follow up on that on the same call. So I think from a witness perspective, obviously things can be really stressful as well. I mean, there's been plenty of calls where witnesses have had, you know, to to see horrific things happening. Um, so that was a a bit of an interesting one. I'm trying to think if I've got anything else. I can add to something similar. I have, I've got so many. I mean, I had one where a bloke, not long before I quit, actually, I had a bloke phone up and he'd just been robbed. So that was uh, that was um, scary for him. Like, he sounded really calm when he spoke to me, but you could tell that he was just in shock. So he was like, I've just been robbed. And normally, like, sometimes people say, I've been robbed. And um, like a police um you know the definition of that in police terms is that you have been assaulted and something's been stolen off you or you've been threatened and something's been stolen off you but some most people phone up and say i've been robbed and it turns out last week the shed was broken into 
but this bloke you know said I've been mugged I've been mugged I've been robbed and I was like right what happened so basically he had um gone out for a walk I believe um and it wasn't that late but it was like winter time so it was quite dark quite early and he decided to take a shortcut through a park and he came across three like lads I think my caller was like 18 or 17 and he came across three lads he's described looking like 13 and they all had their hoods up and like kind of congregate cong huddled around each other and um so he kind of like briefly walked past him and then they started to follow him and he said he could feel someone following him and he turned around and they then he asked what they wanted and then they started to like surround him and said what have you got on you and he said nothing and they said give us cigarettes he said, I don't have anything um later on I found out he was going to the shop to buy cigarettes but he he didn't have anything on him and they said give us your phone and he was said no um and then he said one of them pulled out like a blade and he was like fucking hell like shit um and he said fucking give me your fucking phone or I'm gonna fucking shank you so he's just thinking, holy shit, okay, yeah, um, I think he went to give his phone and then he just fucking legged it. Well, they punched him, that was it. I think they, they smacked him in the face, but he managed to keep hold of his phone. Um, and I think they didn't have, like, they weren't actually going to stab him. They were just, like, you know, threatening him. And I think there was a bit of a tussle. Um, I think somebody then walked past it was it was broken up somehow but he managed to leg it in the end and he wasn't far from like an Asda or something so he phoned at that point as he was running away again officers out straight away searching for him but there was no description really other than you know three small short slim figures uh, about 13 um, with hoods up not much of an accent and they've like fucking spread so it's so difficult to go off that um, for officers obviously but we still did a search anyway, so he was talking to me on the phone and we took ages to get to that one, sadly. I was on the phone to him for ages like, and he was so worked up. And I said, look, just go into Asda. He was waiting around outside because he was safe in the light and with other people. And I said, let's go in and get your, your fags or whatever you need. I said, just keep, keep me on the phone, you know, like, um, don't hang up, put me on your pocket or something. And I could hear him going in, buying some and he had a, had a smoke. And I said, is anyone going to be expecting you or wondering where you are? So... He said he's going to phone his mum and tell her briefly what happened. And I said, well, I'll call you back in like two minutes then. So I'm waiting like two minutes, telling control. I've just had to let him go, but I'm going to phone him straight back. He's, you know, currently in a safe place with other people and in a supermarket. So then I phoned him back and um, he couldn't get through to his mum. And we were like, no one to come and see him, um, tell him to go home. And I'm thinking, fucking hell, I don't particularly want to send him walking home. And I said, look, I'm sorry, mate, but I've been asked if you want to go home and it, I'll put you in an awkward position because you're thinking, I don't want to do this, but I've got control saying we haven't got anyone like tell him to go home somewhere safe. And I said, look, but I totally understand if you don't feel safe, like I wouldn't want to personally, but I'm being asked to tell you, like, to ask you to go home. And he said, I'd rather not if that's all right, if I can get somebody here. And then a unit were dispatched quite quickly after I said, no, he's not going home. And they met him and drove him home. But... Yeah, like I say, tons of stories. Sorry I've gone on a bit with this one. Eight minutes. Oh, I better go. Um, you'll probably skip it all. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. And oh, I'll catch you on Thursday, hopefully. If I call... Um, I'm going to go. I can't talk today. Love you loads. Bye.